Good evening and welcome to Ravenico Live. It's a pleasure to be with you again this evening. This week we did something unique. Last night we were with you again on this very same platform, but we were streaming on Cappy Talk FM, which is the radio station that I present a weekly show on. But tonight we are back here where we are usually here, and we ended our last season a few weeks ago. And this is the beginning of season two. And uh, we started off, uh, well, basically we're starting off, to be fair, um, as our very first interview on season two. Thank you. On Ravenico Live. I'd like to welcome you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ruvi. Joyce Tiara Mujuru. Baby Ruvi, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming. You know, it's, a, it's an honor to have you on the platform. Um, you know, we have many women, uh, you know, people in Zimbabwe who have so much admiration and respect for you. Thank you. Um, you know, given the role you had before, the woman that you are now, the spirit. And, um, you know, we know that we, the Tiara stands for Te Ora yes. But you have an actual name. Te Orai Ropa is a, a, war, a war name, war name. Mm -hmm. and then um, you know your actual name is Runaida Mugari. It, yes, I don't that's know my if anybody birth name. knows that. They should. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, I've seen it many times yeah. now, being repeated, being repeated in papers, right? It's television. coming around now. It's coming around. So we didn't really know that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, if you can hear the chatter in the background, it is because we have a live audience today. Um, we have a very small group uh, that have uh, come forward and uh, wanted to be part of this particular episode where we're going to be engaging with them and finding out their thoughts, comments, questions for Dr. Mjuru. Um, so Dr. Mjuru, you are the leader of the NPP. Mm -hmm. How's that going? Very well. Very interesting. Uh, unique in the sense that uh, it's now a combination of many other things, that, that those that have never been in politics, those that have come from other formations yeah. uh, that I've been with in my previous life. Mm -hmm. And so, so it's just interesting. Yeah. Yes. You know, when you launched your party, I think there was a lull uh, in between when you were expelled from ZANU-PF and when you then spoke. Um, was that silence deliberate? Because silence is sometimes deafening. And everyone was wondering, what is she up to? What is she thinking? What is she feeling? And what's her next move? Tell us about that long period of very loud silence before you came out. It's, it was a period of planning, okay. a period of consultation. It was a period of uh, you know, introspection and uh, just wanting to know what to do next. Mm -hmm. Because uh, what, when you are in this life, it's not your own. Mm -hmm. It's a life of many people. Right. Because uh, you have to satisfy them. And when you launched, you had certain figures by your side. Yeah. People who were also in the ZANU-PF party. And a lot of the criticism came saying, why didn't she launch afresh? Why did she launch with faces that people affiliate with the ZANU-PF? And in retrospect, now that you're no, no longer with them as well, and uh, that party split up, in retrospect, would you still have come out as a, 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 a candidate with them, or would you have changed that plan? You know, things change, mm. in, and um, as situations develop, you are likely to come up with fresh ideas, fresh minds. And when you start a thing, at least, uh, of course, you start with people that you know best. And I'm sure for that time, it was the rightful thing to do because these were the people that I knew mm -hmm. that also had the same feeling, the same ideas, and uh, maybe the same expectations. And do you miss mm -hmm. uh, your colleagues and friends from ZANU-PF? You know, when you have these friends in life, of course you miss them, but when you have a different uh, agenda and expectation, sometimes it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You just carry on. And what is your feeling now of the first family, particularly the president? You worked alongside him for a very long time, and nothing can ever take away from that history. Granted, you've gone on a new trajectory in your own path, but what are your thoughts on him at this stage? I have no spirit of revenge. That's me. And I've said to myself, anyway, I'll carry on with what I'm doing. He is like one of those in Zimbabwe. So he's a Zimbabwean. If I am to deal with the Zimbabwean situation, he's part of that situation. Right. So you don't have to carry on vendettas, you know, fight. Because mine is not to fight anybody except to look for solutions to the situation that is prevailing in the mm. country. Mm. So if he is part of the solution, I have to right. use him as part of the solution. 
if people have to give me ideas of how to go about things, definitely those are things that I have to study. But uh, to concentrate your quality time on personalities, human beings, not concentrating on what people are expecting you to give them, mm -hmm. I think it's a bit of a, a problem right, or a challenge. Right. And, uh, you know, with that, uh, you talked about the solution. Um, and, I mean, we'll get into the detail of NPP in a moment. Um, but just back to that, I mean, there is another woman um, who is in the MDCT, uh, Comrade Tokozani Kupe. Yes. And uh, she is there in the high echelons of the party. And when you were part of ZANU-PF, there was a time where people would say, um, am I, and sometimes there'd be confusion, and say, which am I are you talking about? Because there was a time you were Amai Mujuru, and yes. she was Amai. You know, yes. then they became Dr. Amai. Yeah. Um, I want to know, what was your relationship with her? You, At the time. You are talking of Kupe or you are talking of No, I'm of now Amai talking Grace. of Amai Grace, yes. Uh, right now, she's there. Mm. She's carrying on with whatever she's doing, and I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm doing whatever I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And um, mine is to just uh, throw my ear, my mind to what she does, maybe occasionally, so that it also helps me in my planning. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I don't waste my time. Mm -hmm. Because I want to waste my quality time on the people. Okay. And now going to um, uh, uh, Honorable Kupe, uh, that relationship. I mean, I know back to Doctor, uh, the First Lady, she referred to you as the Queen Bee at some point. And the perception, there was lots of comments around social media about what the interpretation of that is. And when we look back to even when you joined Cabinet in 1980, you are one of the first two women to join. And I think for the most part of your political career, you're often one or only or one amongst the few women within leadership structures. How is that and how is it working with uh, Honorable Kupe on the other side? Kupe is a colleague mm. and she's also holding that high position in mm. MDC. Mm. So I have to respect that. And when you are colleagues, you share things, ideas and so forth. We are not competitors. You're not? No, no. You not, don't no, no, step no, no, on no. each other's toes no, no, or no, threatened no, by each other? Uh, no. Not at all. Right. Because uh, when we are doing our things, we actually plan as women. Mm -hmm. Because what we want to achieve is those issues that benefit women and especially young women. Right. Yes. We got comments already coming in Facebook. This is Simbarashe Magara Chajanzi, a woman, a mother, a person to look up to, Amai Mujuru. Um, as, and as I said, beginning in the program, a lot of the comments came in much earlier since mm -hmm. yesterday around our yes. thoughts of, of, of you. Um, and uh, right, so now they're getting right into the hardcore politics. So I don't think we should waste any more time. <laughs> Another comment here from Manlo LS. Sanzi, why would the opposition trust you and make you the presidential candidate when you just left Zanu PF? You know, trust is, is end. Mm. You work on trust. And sometimes people wear a negative feeling, wear a negative mind. And we shouldn't waste time on those. We just have to work on positives. Right. You see? And in life, not everybody else would like you. Mm. But try by all means, gain trust right. from the people. Right. So this is what I've been doing all along. Mm. Even when I was in Zanobia, mm. I worked with some MDC people in GNU. You had and to, they, yeah. Yes. And they can tell the nation how I worked with them. Right. Yeah. So that's where you're, I mean, I think that reference of the GNU, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're going to get into again the 2018 election. I'd like to end off with that because I think that would be a Good. parting shot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so as I said, you're welcome to contribute. We have our live audience and uh, we're taking questions from you as of immediately if you're ready. Um, so, and then also send your comments here on Facebook. We're also streaming live on YouTube and on our website, which is Um So now here's a comment. This is from Wongai Zimudzi. Why didn't she quit ZANU-PF when she saw that what they were doing was wrong and unbiblical since she says much about her party being God-oriented? Why wait for her to be kicked out first so that she can start airing her views? If she wasn't expelled, was she going to leave? What I'm doing did not just start when I started my new party. My positives started when I was in ZANU-PF. And to me, I believe that's the reason why they had this feeling of not, you know, being happy with my, you know, goings on. So people don't know that it never started three years ago. Yeah. When I go to rural areas, a lot of things are positive things are being identified with me. Right. And they will be reminding, oh, you remember, you came here to Shashi to open and send abstraction irrigation scheme. Oh, you came here to Binga. And that never happened three years ago. Mm. This happened 
many, many years, years ago. ago. So there were things that were never publicized as such. But when you go to rural areas, I don't think there is any rural area which I never set foot and be able to identify right. with the, right. the locals. Okay, so yeah. your work goes back uh, beyond uh, the three years that people might now want to measure you on. Very much Because um, you did a lot before. But Very I guess much. the question, the key point was the fight from within aspect, which I've seen being repeated by you in a number of interviews. I yes. spent the afternoon watching a number of interviews you've already done, mm -hmm. um, short of wanting to be repetitive. You know, But you did talk about fighting from within. Yeah. Um, and do you still believe in that uh, ethos, or have you now had to, by force, fight from outside actually i am going to add a, you know much of my efforts in building on top of what i'd already started right because that's me that identifies with me and i would want to work to dwell on that one because that's the developmental Aspect. you know identity that right. i have with the communities right so those things that benefit the community should be areas that we should dwell on mm -hmm. and spend much time on right. them. I think you do talk of community, as I said, you know, uh, an area that I know you commented on was saying that where elections are concerned, yeah. um, there is, uh, you did admit to violence and intimidation. Mm -hmm. um, you didn't necessarily talk to the idea of rigging, if I'm correct, and you can correct me. Mm -hmm. um, but I read and saw that you talked about that you can't pinpoint if there was a place where votes were shoved into a box. Mm -hmm. But you can acknowledge that mm -hmm. there was times where there was violence and intimidation used, mm -hmm. um, whether it was, uh, you know, uh, hard power or soft power, but where chiefs, for example, mm -hmm. would have to mobilize communities mm -hmm. to go and vote. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't vote, you were ostracized or you weren't given food. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can speak a little bit more to that going into 2018. When you know you're fighting against a system that operates like that, mm -hmm. what's your strategy? Actually, strategy, we need the chiefs to really uh, work as independent as possible mm -hmm. because uh, they've seen what we have gone through as a country and they've seen that it's the very same system now for 37 years. Right. And that which will make us live the, the, the life that people fought for, mm -hmm. that people expected, mm -hmm. that people desire. Right. Right now we have our children, our grandchildren like yourselves. Mm -hmm. you, you have those desires that, you, you, that made you go to school, that right. made you have your courses and so forth. And you, you want to, to have your little flat, you want to have your pretty little family right. with your, your little To be car. able to get a mortgage and your yes. car. You want the, yeah. the life you managed yeah. to live, uh, this generation. It, it, you fact, managed you to be able to do that. You should live a worse life yeah. than mine. Right. I want to admire you to, 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 for you to aim high. Mm. You know, the, just this guy should be your limit. Sure, sure. And, uh, and if I coming back to me with her family, with my son-in-law, me looking after them. Mm. No, that's not what I was. And this is what Zimbabwe yeah, is, Dr. Yeah. Njugu. You have so many uh, you know, pockets where Zimbabweans are on their knees in a lot of ways. The yes. diaspora is out there on their knees. Yeah. Half the jobs that they work there, they wouldn't want to work them. No. Um, they want to be able to contribute. They want to be able to vote. Um, the Zimbabweans living here, a majority of them not living the life that they want or that they, they, they deserve. So how do you speak to those pockets of society that are outside and inside to say, look, I'm here and I want to fix this? Actually, the diasporians, I want them to know that they have a role, mm -hmm. a big role to play. Mm -hmm. Coming back home to work on the economy of this country, the way they are doing out there. Mm -hmm. I know they, if, if it's not your country, mm -hmm. but when you know it's your country, for sure you are now working to say that I want to leave a legacy. Not just for the country, but for my own children. Sure. And these people should mm. be able to know that we have children like Ruvenek, we have children like Wanaupenyu, Wanakuzivakwashi. Mm. Mm. You should be able to see them grow. You should be able to plan. Right. But right now, Wanavedu, you can't plan. What is your plan for the diaspora community? There are about three million out there. Mm -hmm. If we trans uh, translate those numbers into even money injected into our economy, we're speaking billions. What's your plan for the diaspora? Plan yangu inini ndekut, nikangu ita president chat. My diasporians, they should be able to see themselves being part of that developmental team. You know, we are kunoku Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. That they should be able to 
see that they are welcome. They have confidence in their own country because most of them, they are not there on their own accord. Sure. They, they have been forced. They want the first chance they can get. They want to come home. Mm. And that which I should bring should give them that hope. It's the hope that Vanavedu sure. would want to have sure. without being explained. But mm. it's something that should just be there and force them to come sure. home. Thank you. Now, we are here with Dr. T.R. Mujuru, and we have um, so many contributions coming in, as I said, before the show, and even now I can see them, and we also have a live audience. So I'm going to hand over the show to you, because often when I bring people on this platform, it's not about me and my guest. It's about you. It's an opportunity for you to tap into what particularly these leaders are offering. It is a chance to say, okay, you want to be my president? Prove it to me. And that is the opportunity that you have right now. She's here. She's given us her time. So send us your questions. Send us your comments. I'm going to come to our live audience now. Um, if we have any questions so far, uh, we do have one in the back. If we can get a microphone there and uh, take those comments as we roll. Okay, is the mic on? All right, let's just come back. We'll, can you sort out the mic and then we'll come back? Okay, sorry for that. Okay, so uh, Dr. Mujuru, while we wait for the mic to be sorted out, yes. um, you know, we want to get into the, side, the coalition uh, issue. Mm -hmm. Uh, not sure if issue is the right word, but yes. we've been reading in the press, as we know, print media in a lot of ways drives the mindset of uh, Zimbabweans. And uh, we don't know where you are right now. Um, you've just signed an MOU with code. Um, tell us about that, um, and also tell us about your relationship with um, Mr. Trangirai regarding that coalition. Uh -huh. Coalition is the thing that we are all for. Right. And the coalition is live and kicking, and nothing has affected coalition, like what people are saying or thinking. They're saying a lot. Yes, they're <laughs> saying a lot, yeah. misinformed, mm -hmm. because there are people who are not happy for the coalition, mind. So they will try and denigrate, try and put terrible things Who to coalition. Who is not happy about the coalition? Ah, of course, and it's true, Do you so think they, they will be happy to mm. see this gang now? Well, you've been in ZANU PF. Ah. What do you think they're and thinking? Yes, yes, yes. Right. Okay. So yeah. you you know how so, they think. So. Yeah. Coalition, yeah, Taka, it, the, the one that I had with Wachangran eh. was a, a road map. Mm -hmm. How should we come together as two parties? Right. So we are working on it. It's, it's there. You're still working with yes, Mr. Trangiran. We are, we are almost there. Right. Yes, and nothing has affected that. Because you know, you are disagreeing on fundamental issues, you know, um, maybe regards who's going to be the leader, you know, uh, constituency splitting. Maybe speak to us about the technical <laughs> aspect. And I, I don't know why people would want to start with the last things. Mm. No. We haven't got there. Right. No, yes. Mm. And what we want is to make sure that we have time. Me, uh, uh, Changirai and I, we haven't even sat to talk about issues. But You haven't? This, the two no, of you? I, no, no, no. Not to discuss about that. Okay. We haven't. Okay. Because our teams are still working on, right. on that. Right. Yes. So people are already concluding. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mind you, we are working on our roadmap issue and so that we have a conclusive and ideas that will be welcome by the nation. Right. No, we are not doing it for the two of us. Mm. Is this thing mm. But is is this the way how we can salvage this own nation? So which other parties are you including in this coalition? Every party that is ready to work with us. Right. And so far uh -huh. those that are fully on board? Uh, so far that that are fully on board like if you look at uh, the coalition of democrats yes they are for that right those that are in in nera now mm -hmm. going for the nera mm -hmm. they are going for that but it's maybe where people would say we want to pick whom to work with mm. and with ours we are saying no 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 our thinking is everybody must come on board 
let's not kick off right. others. We should be inclusive. Right. You see, I, that's I, I where like... probably others are not becoming clear mm, there. Mm. Because as NPP, we are saying, mwana mwana, chenga osema nanga, kuna risine mozi. If there's anybody who is not good for the country, acha muva ega, abai wangabude. Ehe. Asusa, don't disturb the good program for that the nation. That is happening. Yes. So you feel the coalition is the answer is the to answer. defeat ZANU-PF yes. in the 2018 elections. Yes. Now with this in mind, like mm -hmm. I said, we are as citizens and mm -hmm. the electorate mm -hmm. still waiting to hear a clear roadmap, mm -hmm. a clear um, understanding of who is the leader of mm -hmm. the coalition. Totangi mm -hmm. Maybe you might say that's the end, but you understand for the Zimbabwean citizen in a lot of ways. Muchafamba say, Munoji Chaga say, and the Munuacho Ie Yuamuru Kuchaga, and Fanda Kungari Munu, and Ombiriza Renoguti. This is a torn nation. They, there's a lot of things that we have to take into consideration. They are, uh, there's a lot of groupings. You know, Tirkuta are about diasporians. Mm. We are not even talking about ourselves as a nation that has gone through uh, traumas. Mm. How are you going to work on that? And it, yeah. we are also we are talking about traumas that have been created through elections, traumas that have gone within the nation when others wanted to rule this and that regional mm. and what have you. So is you're that, aware of this history, yeah? Carry is on. that person because, mm. going to work for the country to be a single united? Country. So, tino fanira kuziva izuzu. Endi tine waka vaku ondo. Andi iti. Tine waka anga varikuno. Tine, the young. Vasi na ombo zi wona ondo. Vasi na ombo zi ziva. Vasi na ombo zi ziva. Your expectations, kuti. Saka maapu ipapa apu, tunoda uzama mjuru magarisa. Endi, are you receptive of those ideas? Because vana, when they are crying, you have to give them an ear. Endi, you also have to converse, discuss. Mwonzwa, endi, Exchange. Mm. So, what type of a leader is that going to be? Do so you feel that you are that leader? I think I am. So, you would want to be the president of the coalition, all being equal in your favor? All being equal, yes. Yes. Eh, and, but, uh, but are the Zimbabweans expecting such a leader? Mm -hmm. but, but, uh, no, 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 no. But completely yeah. independent person. You know, when yeah. you say this, I'm very intrigued because mm. we're saying, you know, let the people decide, being the electorate. Mm. However, Musati Mayenda ku election. Tisatano vota isus. Pachere ni se kwa election mofano nge ma wiri rani. Anti murugu shona. Kuti ndi ani acha tunga mi. Tichaisa face rani pa chi. So are you okay if you had to relent that leadership of the coalition to somebody else? Do you know what I am feeling? Inini ndiri muna arikuda kuona Zimbabwe ichi unzu wapamwe chete as a united nation. You see, this tone in our spirit that is now existing in our country should not uh, be ignored. There are a lot of things that we must take into consideration, Ruveneko. Because if you say Ndinindi Noda Samaim Juru, and yet you are not going to manage that situation, it doesn't work. Mm. You see, it does not work. But let's clarify, are mm. you okay with somebody else leading the coalition? Asiri Mini. I have to. You have to just oblige. Yes. And you'll still work with them. You know, we are Democrats. No we are we are there to work with the people's wishes, people's expectations. Let's come to our audience. We've got some questions. We're live in studio with Dr. Mujuru, and we're discussing politics, 2018 elections, and of course, the NPP. So let's come to our audience uh, for our first question. Please continue, sir. Sorry that you were interrupted earlier. It's okay. Um, Peter Sun Marivadzi. Uh, my question to you is that uh, if you become the president of Zimbabwe, do you really want? Do you really think that you can prove the essence of humanity and unity within Zimbabwe? And what is it that you want to do for Zimbabweans, for the citizens of Zimbabwe, the subjects of Zimbabwe that ZANU-PF is failing to offer for them? In India, the president of Zimbabwe, Chikuru Kuru Chandino Fanuwa Kuita, 
must be positive. Positive, not negative, not selective, inclusive. My plans have to give hope. My plans, people should be able to read in my plans. They should be able to understand where we are going as a country. And there are many things that I need to do in the shortest possible time, which things have hurt our people for a long time. I will find two kilometers of Snagona roadblock. Second, I will meet a crime for two kilometers. You know, Panesh Jinuja, you know, it has become a nuisance. Kuvanu is Zimbabwe. Variku Tambudzika, and they have been, you know, suffering for too long. Why are we not giving our people a chance? Vanu Vedu should be able to be con contented. Vanu Vedu should be able to be happy in their own country. Those of our children who are 35 years and below, Kutumu Vunze Wuti Nai, what is a good life? They don't know. Mm. You have been to school. Do you know how to be a worker? Kumuko usen eight o'clock. Uchino clock o paba sabme do opera opi o pay slip. Others, if I, I may ask, do you have you seen a pay slip? Has he? Can you really plan it today? Has he? So, unongo na kuti we are a, we don't even have even. A currents of our own. Saka mm. right. right. now I want ourselves to have a system that works. Mm. Arabiz, banks, to have commerce in our family. Mm. That's all that we just have to make sure that our people bec become human beings again. Right. I love that answer, Dr. Mujuru, just as a follow up to Ramataura. Um, you know, what you're describing did not start three years ago. Yes. It was there before. Mm. And they say hindsight is 2020. Mm. And you were in the system and you were working hard to change these things. Because mm. clearly what's on your heart now has not been years ago when mm. you were still in ZANU PF. My question then is, you know, what would you say as a, somebody for, who was inside and is now outside is the biggest problem with the current leadership of this country? If you could identify two things that you would say, even if they win the election next year, they have to fix A, B, and C. Attitude. Attitude. Do they feel for the people? Mm. So I am saying, they Attitude must, is one thing. Yes, they must, another thing. The way how the system, the way how they deal with their things, right, must change. I'm curious. You know, I don't know how much you can tell us, but you know, for hours, you know, uh, sometimes the the top leadership will sit in meetings, uh, being perhaps the Politburo, mm -hmm. or even parliamentarians in Parliament. Um, and yourself, you were vice president. Mm -hmm. for a long time yes. and you would move around in your convoy mm -hmm. and um, we have a president who when he travels he doesn't necessarily see uh, even infrastructure wise what we experience when mm -hmm. we're going to other parts they fix the road when he's coming mm -hmm. my question to you is do you feel that people like yourself when you were vice president and people like the president himself are, are, are privy to the reality the real reality of what Zimbabwe is or are they protected by this if you are high up there, you don't see what happens. You, you are in your own world. Right. I will tell you this for sure. Things that I am discovering as I'm getting into the people, you hear I'm addressing in Chitungwiza. I go there first of all. I go and buy in Chitungwiza. I go to Mpezanamo in Chitungwiza. I do all these things. And you say to yourself, oh my. So, my driver, I'm going to choose a road to Fumba Nayo and Didi. This is the But today, I am now telling them, before I address these people in Kuwazana, I want to go and meet the people where they are. Mm. I want to feel. I, I am a, pers a, a person who loves to meet people and talk to them. And 
Bamugabe and Fungo Tivano Ziva Usawir. And if Fungi put Tivacumboze, Abuti, Nikaino Yawara Kushkai Papo. And who do you blame for that? Chitaura, mm. Who do you blame for that? Okay, let me tell you. Tichi Vaku Wondoga, Takaita Parachute. Helicopter landing, bang. Washikai Papo, you, you don't even see what happens there. And Kuti Wajwona, if you happen to see that, Woda Kuti Ngaji Tike, Nobwanzi, Chef Magutori Wamasimba, Mugarega Mkazu, we are Chita Jekesho Valley, Quarquita, Okuvan, Wachi Exporter, Dia Tobe Akuto Zikana Nivan Udarika, I mean, two, three months down the line, that project is closed. You see, this is what happened to me. Really? Yes. Unenda kubinga. Because I've been to Binga many times. And you see the poverty. You don't have to be explained. Yeah, Matt North is yes, shocking. Yes, you see the poverty. You say, ah, but it is a busy river. It is a river. It is a 11% of the water passes through the land of Zimbabwe. And we can utilize that to improve the lives of our people. The guy is an irrigation scheme. Chef, I am going to get a lot of water. Ah, and the matters of Pera, I'm a Pedzwa. Who was fighting you from within and um, stopping you from implementing these things that you saw with the naked eye? Who was that? Where's the. To my emissary, to my speakers, to name that to Chino Taura Guti. Was running about Gonzi. This is Ramninga Mauna Gundi Tauri. And we love to hear that that sweet talk. Is it correct? In much of Murkum Soro. Eh, it is not a farira, it is not a encourager. But at his house, it is not a shit sapatashika. So, do you blame the president for where he is now in terms of not realizing the reality? Is it the people around him that have put him in this position? Or, as you said, does he like the sweet talk? It's both ways. Mind you, Kune two weka. I saw one way traffic. It two way with the Jiruku Vokari, the Jiruku Voku Nevan, the Argus Batasi. And the style of work yake yaka mira say, do you expose yourself to the people? Mm -hmm. Or do, what is your plan anyway mm -hmm. when you are a head of state? What is your plan about your community, about your people? Sure. And it must run. So if, if you don't do that, you end up being misled. And the sweet talk will continue, it will become a lullaby. So being on the ground uh, and being in touch with reality uh, as being asked by Chioneso Rupere and Mimi Wacho mm -hmm. about your strategy and your plan, would you say that that is part of it as well, to be in touch with reality so you can deal with the real issues on the ground? I, and I didn't start it in NPP, like what I've said. Yeah. I started it long back sure. when I was Minister of Community Development and Women Affairs, when I was governor. You started with sports and youth sports and recreation or something, even, no? Even if I wasn't able to kick <laughs> yeah. the ball. But I was, uh, <laughs> that was your first. Minister <laughs> of, uh, yes. Yeah. But, but to tell you the truth, I have been in touch with the people. And I want, my, my passion is to see this minute family unit get changed. Mm -hmm. Saka, for you to say my country has developed, it, the development has to start with the family. Mm. Yes, the nation will be doing whatever you can do up there, but take care of these pennies. Pounds will take care of themselves. And I know what administration does to bigger businesses, to how they can communicate with nations, to how they can do other things, but for you to be able to... Uh, immerse yourself with the communities and make sure that they are able to make to feel the government knows they are there. Mm. They in Malipati, they in Ibinga, Nyanga North, they should be able to change their style, their livelihoods. They have to move out of those poor and dagger houses. Sure. I was born in those houses. And I don't no want one to should see still live there in 2017. Crawling in that mm. dagger house. Mm. Mm. Sure. It's very painful.
passionate words there from uh, Dr. Joyce Mujuru as we discuss her intentions for 2018 and what she's going to do with the country, um, you know, if she is given the presidency. And this is, I guess, an analysis of when she was inside and now that she's outside. We're going to come to our audience now. Um, as I said, we have a live audience in the studio tonight, which is always great. Um, so let's take the questions that we have there. Please go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much. Sorry, what is Thank you. Thank you for that. All right, we're going to take a quick break and then we'll allow you to answer that question. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. Sometimes I may be green, depending on my smile Sometimes I feel blue, but it's really been a while So color me brown, but I never miss red Sprinkle a little bit of yellow just to brighten up my day My girl's black and white, like my old TV set Mama's always on my case, a room with paint job But I be like, nah, I'm trying to get a day job I can paint the picture vivid if I get it all on credit So tell me where to look Technology, hey. amazing quality, guaranteed Nash, yes, give me some color and rock my world Nash, yes, give me some color and paint my world Imperial King Technology, hey. amazing quality, guaranteed Nash, pay. give me some color and rock my world Nash, pay. give me some color and paint my world Nash, pay. Nash, pay. Nash, pay. Nash pay. King Technology, amazing quality, guaranteed
Welcome back to Ruveneko Online. I'm Ruveneko in studio this evening with Dr. Joyce Teorai Ropa Mujuru. And we've been talking about a little bit about her history, her time in ZANU PF, and her thoughts and plans and vision for the people of Zimbabwe. And we have a live audience in studio today, which is fantastic. And we also have you online. I see your messages and comments coming in on Twitter and on Facebook. Keep them coming. But we're going to come back to now our audience. We had a question before the break. This question was from Never. Um, he said a lot. I uh, saw someone on Twitter saying, I can't hear that long-winded question. Um, but he was passionate. And that's what often happens uh, with our guests. So um, he, in essence, was asking you. Yes. You know, you, you caught the question. Yes. In essence, I'll summarize this. I've maybe just tuned in or didn't get it. Uh, you know, he was asking that, you know, since he was a child, he mm -hmm. wanted to be mm -hmm. president. Mm -hmm. And up until now, which was uh, served in 1980, he was in grade one. And up until now, nobody has managed to become president besides the one that was put in in 1980. And he's also asking to say, you know, what are you going to do to inspire more people to be passionate about their country, to be Zimbabwean, to, be, to love that idea, the patriotism? How do you speak to that? Uh, for never, I think you now know that in our constitution, Taranima term limits, so that we change. If you change the face of the administration, the leadership, that will also help. You know, those that had lost it. Ah, we have no hope about our country. And the planning, sh like what I said before, should be able to give them hope and should be able to to, to give them that opportunity. We must be able to, to come up with opportunities that, that, that will give them that excitement. Mm. I want to go home and do X, Y, Z so that they will come home, want to invest even within Zimbabwe. Even those that are not Zimbabweans, they should also come to Zimbabwe and invest. And once a person invests, you would want to see his, uh, his dollar growing. And once the leadership is not showing that, for sure, why, what's the use of coming to Zimbabwe? What's, what's the use of, of sure. coming home? Sure. So things that we should be able to do, should be able to give pe our people chance, hope, expectation of the positives. Mm -hmm. The term limit uh, works for you, coincidentally, especially where a coalition is concerned, for example, mm -hmm. because um, the very people you want to work with, you look at uh, Mr. Morgan Trangirai. Mm -hmm. he, has, uh, he has run for elections in his party since 2000, and uh, now he's still running. What's your interpretation of that um, in continuing to run for a party when three elections later you still haven't succeeded for your party? I'm sure we all understand why uh, the mutations in MDC. Yes. It, this was the cause. So I wouldn't want to see that happening in the NPP. Not at all. There should be a time when you should also, as a person, enjoy doing certain things. You can't do that thing many, many times over and over again. You also need to have time to have new ideas, new thoughts, new personalities. So you would say then even if a coalition was to be successful that Mr. Trangirai should not be the presidential candidate? I, I am not saying that. But I'm just saying that caused the problems in MDC. So if we are to do things that will invite and encourage our people to want to come home and participate in the construction of their own economy, rebuilding of the country and so on, we should be able to Give them that chance, sure. that planning, you know, you know. You sure. know yeah. Let's come to more questions. We don't have much time. Of course, we are live. We've got an hour. Uh, let's come to Baba Faye there. Uh, who's got the microphone? Oh, uh, Penyu, please go ahead. Okay, so you made mention earlier of livelihoods. And one of the biggest employers in this country is the informal sector. It's quoted 90% unemployment and the, you know, 90% is employed in the informal sector. So what plans do you have as NPP, and particularly if you were to become president, to formalize those informal businesses? Because, of course, they're not counted if they're not taxable, right? So what plans do you have to formalize those businesses and to assist small business owners and SMEs to, um, to grow, to establish themselves, and to become sustainable in this environment? Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, there are countries where their um, economy is anchored on small businesses. So we are not going to invent the wheel. Mm -hmm. It's just learning and improving so that it suits our situation in Zimbabwe. But it hurts when a country is 90% informal. It hurts. When your own graduates 
find themselves selling uh, airtime. It hurts. I can't formalize that. I would want an economy that will embrace, that will swallow all those uh, in, in, who are active, in, who should be in active employment, so that we have fewer um, informal uh, persons who will then be assisted so that with time they have to graduate. They can't remain in the informal sector. They have to graduate and become small businesses that are good enough to reckon with. Mm. Yeah. We should be able to count on them. We should be able to write them. They should be able to plan using those small businesses. Right now, they can't plan. I want to come to that and break it down a little bit um, regarding um, particularly your idea of this uh, informal sector. Mm -hmm. Some will say formalize the informal sector. And you seem to be speaking to the idea of that they should graduate out of the informal sector. Um, so are you looking yes, more them, toward yes. job creation? Yes, some or are you them, looking yes. toward formalizing? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I, I wanted to understand that a little bit more. Because some companies, some, uh, you know, those that are unemployed struggle to even register a company. Something as, as easy as just registering a shelf company can be a process. To apply for a loan is a process. So my question is, how would you speak to that very small business owner who doesn't necessarily want to be employed, doesn't have the education to be employed, but they want to stay in that 90% unemployment sector and still survive? Make them enjoy it. Make it easy for that person to live in that life. Mm -hmm. But don't make it difficult. And you know why it's becoming so difficult? Corruption. And that's one thing we must get rid of. Mm. Corruption is now cancerous. And we would want, I would want to make sure that those that hope to remain in the informal sector is done properly. You structure them nicely. Support them. We are not saying everybody should be formalized. Uh -uh. Some will be graduated. Some, some will remain. Staying. But structure them nicely right. so that they enjoy doing that, and even with government. Right. You can easily text them, but in a proper manner. Right. And Co make it easy for them to, to do their business, mm -hmm. not make it so difficult mm -hmm. that they can't even see any sure. benefits. Corruption is everywhere worldwide, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the issues I know that uh, uh, corruption stems from is poverty, mm -hmm. and poverty is one of the sustainable development goals, something that the world is all you know, looking forward to, to, to eradicating. My question is, what would you say where poverty eradication is concerned for Zimbabwe? What would be the key steps that we need to take? See which sectors can accommodate, can swallow numbers mm. and get them to be formalized. Right. Especially when you are talking of agriculture. Can you make agriculture beneficial? Can you try and make agriculture enjoyable? You can speak to that. You're a successful oh, farmer I am. yourself. I am yes. a successful farmer. Yeah. But get people to enjoy it because they will know, if I'm a farmer, I know I have markets. Mm. If I'm a farmer, I know when I you know, produce, I have a red market, I can get my money within a given period of time. Not when I send my things to the market, I have five, ten years down the line, I haven't received mm. anything from that. You know. So... It, sometimes it's the government that shoots itself in the foot. Sure. Because uh, when you do these things and you leave the farmer to be on her own, on his own, and sometimes you have no uh, plan as to whether tomorrow you remain on the same farm, and people just come to threaten you, mm -hmm. left, right, and center, these are not things that will make you grow and develop as many people as you want, who can be swallowed. Thank you. We we'll, might come back to farming uh, a little bit later on, because I know Dr. Mjuna has a lot to say about that, as I said, uh, as one of, the, one of the very successful farmers in the country. But let's come back to our live audience, uh, and please go ahead. Marian Chombo, uh, National People's Party Chair Lady. Uh, Dr. Mjuru, we know Mata Building region, they've suffered a lot under Gukura Hondi. As the president come 2018, what are you going to do to bring closure to the Gukura Hund issue? Thank you very much, Amai Chombo. The good thing is with NPP, we have already started engaging. It doesn't matter how painful, how frightening a situation is. Face it positively. I've already started engaging. 
And within NPP, we have created a department of peace, truth, and reconciliation. And we know it's one thing that we want to do and do in earnest. Are you working with the uh, commission, the Peace, Truth, and Reconciliation Commission? Do you think they would want to listen from what we have in mind? They have no time for us mm. as the opposition. But we said once we are in government, this is what we want to do. Right. Yes. And we also have an organ of war veterans. Because there are also these people that have to work together. They have to be able to come up with those ideas because us as policymakers, we will tell them what we want to see. We want to bring closure for sure. Mm. We want to heal the people. We want to heal the nation. Yes, we talk of Matibeleland, but there are a lot of things that have happened in this country right, right. during elections. Even when there are no elections, people want to hold a normal political rally. Mm. Just find themselves being you know, hustled and, and, and uh, puzzled into something else when it's supposed to be notification of the police. You are supposed to be given time. Mm. No, 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 no. We should be able to bring closure to some of these things in a good, harmonious sure. way. Dr. Majuro, I'm going to ask you a personal question around yes. closure and yes. healing. Yes. Um, you lost your husband. Yes. And uh, I've watched a few interviews in which you've said that you're still trying to find who killed your husband. Mm. My question is, how have you come on that journey? And have you found peace? When it's personal, it's hard to find peace with yourself. But you would want to say, people should understand. And that's why I feel for those people that have gone through this, like myself. And I'm saying, it's only that person who has gone through that, who understands how to deal with such a situation. That's why I'm saying we should find closure. Have you found closure? Not personally? yet. Not yet, because uh, it, it has never been <laughs> discussed to the fullest. You remember the family wanted the body exhumed mm -hmm. and given further studies, and it was never you know, accepted. Mm -hmm. So that's how they felt we have closed it. But from the side of the family, do you think that's the best closure? It's the same as we are talking about Matibeleland or any other case that might have ever happened in the country. We should not be able, or we should not be covering up. That's the worst thing. Covering up a problem is, a, is not something that we should entertain. So we want these people and people with wisdom to lead in finding closure to some of these things. Even counseling. Nobody counsels us. Nobody has ever even found time to sit with those that have gone through traumas mm -hmm. to try and counsel. And it should be... Did you go through counseling? No. I mean, you were in the war. Like I said, you've lost no. a husband. No. Why is that? Because sometimes it's a culture. Because there is no opportunity for that. Nobody pays attention. If you lose somebody into the Bonella, Others would say, ah, it was like a pusa. You know, it's painful. Yeah. And we should not be behaving like we, we have no feelings. Sure. We shouldn't be inhuman to yeah. that extent. Let's come to our audience in the last few minutes that we have. And thank you for answering that thank you. personal question. Um, let's come back to our audience there. I'm Baba Faye. I've got two simple questions for... Please stand, Baba Faye, so we can see you. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Babafei, Aka Dunstan Magesa. I've got two very simple questions for Dr. Mjuru. The first one, we know Dr. Mjuru is a former a fighter or a soldier. Given an opportunity that she is elected to occupy the highest office of the president, say in 2018, are we not going to see a military rule 
we should be very detached from the civilians. And then my second question, are we going, I'm now looking at the application of law. Are we not going to see laws being applied selectively to the citizens? I thank you. Thank you, Baba Faye. Mm. Thank hey. you. Ranzi, you're going to rule like a soldier. <laughs> Tell us about that. <laughs> the good thing is, am I juries am I? Am I, in a sense, is a disciplinarian? Am I, in a sense, feels for the children? Saka, when you are in this position, you are a head of state. Whenever they say of all sorts, they say, so you must be a level headed person. I will things because I must be felt. I, that's why I said. This country has gone through traumas of the sorts. Varukuda healing, varukuda closure to certain things, varukuda protection, varukuda to be held by the hand in certain situations. You have to study these situations and be able to take it as, as you go. So if you say, uh, I'm a soldier, so I must be felt that uh, this is who I am. Do you know the ones who are here? And you are not supposed to do that. You might not get the results that you want. That answers that. Thank you. Next question, please. Uh, thank you so much, Doctor, for having us here. My name is Tony Rotsito. I'm a Zimbabwean, and I am uh, the president of an online association called Zimbabwe Online Content Creators. My worry is, uh, Dr. Mjuri, you've been with Zanupia for a long time, and many Zimbabweans, specifically in the opposition, they are quite spe skeptical about you being a genuine opposition candidate. Uh, what are you doing to allay such fears that you are probably sent through to just divide the votes? What are you doing to restore that confidence that you are a real genuine opposition candidate? Thank you. Thank you. Amayim Juru applies for rallies and she's refused. If I were an UPF person, would they do that? Amayim Juru's people are being fought, harassed. And I'm, I'm sure you have seen them with scars and so forth, and taken through the court. And I am Juru at one time or twice to government to court about the Zimbabwe dollar, the bond note. Because I am working for the people of Zimbabwe. I know the feeling of the people, what they are going through. If I were as an OPF person, would I take my own party, my own government, my own people mm -hmm. to court? on behalf of opposition parties. Is this part of the reason why you've lost, a lot of your party members have resigned? Um, is it part of that harassment? Why is that you've lost a number of them? Some of it is um, journalism, which we have in Zimbabwe, is over, over publicized and uh, things are not... Sensationalized. Yeah, that's very true. Right. Otherwise, it's not like that. But, uh, you know, People have a choice. Some of them, for sure, they left for other parties, like any other party. People are living here, going to the new parties and so forth. It's a back and forth thing, situation in Zimbabwe. It's not just in NPP. Right. So, like what I've said in many, you know, many fora, we, I have to work for the trust that people should have with me. I don't have to demand it. And for those that have worked with me, not just now, even during GNU, even in my private life, they will tell you, the other Mujuru that we have been reading and being told is not the Mujuru that we know. But because there is this uh, propaganda, there is this sensationalism in the media, and so on. And that's what people normally take. Vanuano does no nakaga. Saga Waganzgoti Mam Juru Waita my boyfriends or Kapfeka Mini. That's what they want. Wagans Goti Mam Juru no Baskere Kivana Diamond story. Ah, you're one of my diamonds. My juri is a billionaire. My God, I want that company to hand it do you know what? 
when you're doing certain things, you don't do them singly. You don't do them alone. You should have a driver who should be running with those diamonds. You should have a car that should be with the number plates and so on. But why is it that there is no driver, there is no number plate, there is no plane that took the diamonds, there is no mine where the, the stone was picked from. But people would want just to talk, I talk, mean, talk. I ah, mean. Please, I think Zimbabweans must learn to say the truth. And we're hearing it, as we said, from the horse's mouth. There's a benefit of broadcast. Um, but, you know, sometimes they say there's no smoke without fire, but we're not going to get into those technical. Sometimes I call those, you know, the smaller issues um, about mini skirts and whatnot. Um, but let's, uh, <laughs> although, I mean, we wouldn't mind seeing you in a mini skirt. But um, let's, uh, let's come to our audience. We're going to take two more questions. Um, we've already done an hour, unfortunately. Um, I know my team's going to kill me here. Um, but uh, let's just take two more questions, and then we're going to have to wrap up the show. Unfortunately, because we have a live audience, we do have to accommodate for that little bit of extra time. So let's take two more contributions there. Thank you. All right. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Michael Chipula. I represent the youth. Uh, my question for the doctor is, in my line of business, I, I liaise with most of the youth around Darare, for example. Uh, no matter what status quo, most of them have no idea how to even register to vote. Most of them don't even care whether they're going to vote or not. And right now, I'd like to believe that the youth is now the majority of the population. So they would make quite the great ally for anyone who wants to win the presidency. My question for you is, how do you intend on getting the youth to register to vote, to really actually do care, instead of just being at the uh, shops, drinking codeine, drugs, doing whatever they got to do. What are you going to do yourself, personally, to make sure that they do vote, they do go register? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. I've already started visiting these places. Mingle, see them, talk to them, tell them how they have been robbed of their important quality life and that they shouldn't neglect themselves. This is the time. It's a resolution that an individual has to have. Jingatonet kuti munano vaate akuna chino chino sanduka chinga chinja. Ah ah. As your mother, my worry is your future. I'm 62. What type of a son am I going to leave? What type of a daughter-in-law, daughter, I'm going to leave? I want my son, my daughter, my son-in-law to understand that ndiye wandatari sana nae. Future young woman is now in his hands. Saka, you have to know. Kuti, we don't want to continue to leave you behind. Ziva, your quality time has been stolen. Ziva, your future is in your hands. Ziva, you can only do that by deciding to register. Go and check your name in that voter's roll. Go and vote that day. And mind you, it's just one day. Which will save your future. One day. And well, it's two if you include the registration process. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. No, I hear but... You. Yeah. These are two days, three days, where you can also go and check your name, register, check your name, then go and vote. But these are only three days that will change your life forever. For the good. Not to continue to leave people robbing you whilst you are watching. Sure. No, don't allow them to do that. Thank you, Doc. And our last question tonight before we wrap up our program. Um, my name is Farai Dube. Um, basically representing myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm 35 years old, but I feel like I'm 44 because of the situation in Zimbabwe. You know, I know it's a stress. It, it's a stress. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to just grab the bull by its horns right yes. now. Um, with the current government and oppositions, there's not really much encouragement for our age, our generation, to actually be given some sort of power to be take charge of our destiny. Oh, sorry. <laughs> to take charge of our destiny. Like, you know... Uh, I, kind of, I can't compare ourselves to France, but we've got a 37-year-old guy now who's around the country. I'm sorry, but you guys are not getting any younger anytime soon. 
39. But I feel that we are being, our talents are being wasted right now. And we are also just being blindsided. And every time we try to get our voice to be heard, it's always just be suppressed, 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 whether it's the current government or the opposition. I can't even think of Chamisa being the only person who actually represents our youth, but there's so much more that we can offer. What can be done for us to be encouraged? Like, it's just basically a follow up to what you're saying, but mm -hmm. we need some sort of a platform for us to be given those responsibilities mm -hmm. to show you that we are capable of actually running ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you want a position in her party? <laughs> They're there. <laughs> they are there. You know, I have, I have people that have even left the comfort of the diaspora, not the comfort, but the decent jobs in the diaspora to come and join NPP. We have Simba Nyananga there. He's now with us. Mm. He's one of the journalists and uh, I think a great we fan know. of many people. Mm. And we are saying in NPP, your time is not tomorrow as youth. Your time is now. And in order that inter interaction, I have women that have also come up with their hashtags and what have you. She forced is run by girls. She was 2018. Yes, these are That's girls. That's Maureen Kademaunga. Kade, Kademaunga, and we also have Sibo, mm -hmm. Nokutle, mm -hmm. Nobutle, something like mm -hmm. that. And these are the li little young girls, pretty teen, and I love them. Because <laughs> what they are doing is very encouraging, especially to young ones like yourselves. Because you should be able to see yourselves get, get immersed, be, be participatory. Take part. If you just sit back, how do we mentor you? I can't dig you from your hidden corner there. Make yourself available. Amai Mujuru is available. I want my grandchildren to play with me. Can I read the gong at no no tamba Let's go and play it. Teachings wanana. Because in dope masiro and no kitirai randino ziva. And that's how I can learn. What's worrying you? What's your pain? Saka mkaramba muri koko, kunana bronco, and muchita, shaka siyana siyana. There are certain areas which we also can't get to. But please, in the apota, make yourselves available. We are also available for you. Where can people find you as a parting shot? I mean, that is not necessarily him expressing interest in your party, but he's saying as a young person, creating opportunity if you were to now lead the country. Mm -hmm. Where can people find you right now and if they want to participate and join you? Munema and hashtag so, yeah. amuna aripo yeah. tinokupa izozo. Yeah. Munema phone aripo tinokupa izozo vana simba and roba saramo. Okay. You can just ask and we can avail yourselves. To, right. you know, what we do know is mm. that uh, the Twitter handle for mm. the National People's Party is at NPP Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And that's on Twitter. I think once you found them there, you mm. can at them or you can DM them. And I mm. think that's a good starting point. Um, but I want to thank you. My Dr. Pleasure. My pleasure. We could sit and talk for hours, um, you know, but it really is a pleasure to have had you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to our live audience for your participation. It's good to see passionate Zimbabweans and so many young Zimbabweans as well. Um, so thank you for making the time to come out this evening. I sincerely appreciate it. We'll do more to have more of these live forums, especially as we go into election season. Because as I said, this show is never for me. It's never about me. It's always about you. And you help to make the content what you want it to be. Ask the questions that you want to be asked. Once they're there, I ask them. So um, thank you very much, and thank you to my team behind the scenes and our sponsors. Davies Events, thank you so much, Corporate Event Management Company and Zim. And they offer power, lighting, stage setup, the whole works, and they've been with us since day one. So thank you to them. Sonia's Events for the day call, they hire equipment. Um, so thank you so much for them. They're also on Facebook, and their branch is in Tudor Valley. Set and Solutions for doing our analytics and our research, thank you very much. Um, it's been a pleasure working with you. And uh, it's going to be another exciting season right here on Ravenical Online. And uh, keep your contributions coming through. I know all of you are pressing me. Trust me, I'm also trying to get my own dad. There's a time where we separate daddy and minister. 
I'm still trying to liaise with his PA on that one. So um, we do. We try our best. Uh, those that know when I was at my former employer, I did host my father before on radio. So I know that people are saying, I know health is a very, very key issue in our country, and it's not something that I take lightly. And I think if we're going to discuss health, let's get the minister himself. So um, uh, if you can help me you know, lobby and get him to come on, that would be great. Um, but thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, we'll be back again next week, same time, same place. I'm Ravenna Good night for now. Be good. And if you can't be good, be safe.